Hello and welcome to the Western Buckeye League 2024 High School Swimming Championships. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Nick Fraley. Glad to be here at the Defiance Area YMC, YMCA excuse me, for the big races today. We are underway with the first heat of the girls 200 yard medley relay. Heat two is getting ready to step on the blocks. They are gonna line up like this in lane one will be Elida. Lane two is Shawnee. Lane three, Walpock. Lane four is St. Mary's. Lane five, Ottawa Glendorf. And in lane six is Kenton. And Walpock comes in with the top seat time of a minute, 51-3-1. And about two seconds off of the meet record. And as everybody gets quiet here on deck, and we are underway. Meet record belongs to Salina back in 2020. They swam a 149-8-2. First leg is backstroke in this medley, Nick. And you know, it's always a great way to start off the meet. We get to see all the strokes right away, but it's an even better way to kick off a conference meet where there's so many rivalries, individual and team. Swim is such a unique sport, and these kids, you see each other all year round. Yeah, and this, this is a high intensity race to start out the entire swim meet. We saw Sierra Rufa there come out real strong in the back stretch of St. Mary, and this is the 50 that is gonna determine this for the boys and the girls. The breaststroke is like the weak link in a lot of people's relays. If you have a strong breaststroke, you're gonna have a really good chance of winning this race. And you can see St. Mary's there in lane four, out to the lead on the breaststroke. Walpock right there as they shoulder to shoulder. A great race from Piper Triplett of St. Mary's and Elizabeth Seidner. Coming into the wall, looks like they are gonna hit the water right around the exact same time as they stay neck and neck coming into the butterfly. And, uh, Walpock came in with a few seconds better sea time, but sea time don't really mean anything in any race. So both teams looking for a strong finish. This is the last big swim meet before teams are going to start preparing for sectors and go for some potential state. A great third leg by Katie Bauer has put Walpock out in front. St. Mary's trying to stay close as we head into the last 53. And Walpock will cut it. A great start right there. But St. Mary's is coming on strong. Wow. Look at those splits on that butterfly as Walpock had a two-second faster split, 26-7 to 28-1. But here goes St. Mary's. St. Mary's is going to take it. It looks like in lane four, a, what a fabulous open opening race in the medley relay as St. Mary's comes in, touches the wall in 152-9-0 and they are going to be your conference champions in the 200 medley yeah. relay. Claire Turner just took that away. I mean, she had a great breakout strokes into a great flip turn, better breakout strokes after the flip turn, and just finished very strong right there. Great way to get the day kicked off. A lot of exciting races still to come. Up next, it'll be the boys 200 yard medley relay. The boys 200 yard medley relay is in the water. They're gonna be lined up as follows. Ottawa Glendorf in lane two, St. Mary's in lane three. Shawnee in lane four and Wampok in lane five. The top seed coming into this race. The St. Mary's Rough Riders with a time of 149-0. They're just off of the meet record of 139-81. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. See if they can challenge. As heading off to a nice start was St. Mary's down there in a lane number three. In lane five, we have Owen Becker, a uh, very strong backstroker. He's a senior this year, probably looking to get a couple of first places here at the field. And Becker looks like he just got to the wall ahead of Reese Triplett of St. Mary's. That's going to be a fun 100 meter backstroke race to watch later on today as those two are going to go after it. Uh, got a three team matchup here compared to a two team matchup in the girls. Uh, we got here. We got St. Mary's, Sony, Walpock. All of these programs have nice wide programs for their kids to grow up in, so they always produce a lot of strong swimmers. Brady Triplett coming in, leading the way for St. Mary's. He's going to touch first as they're going to hit the water for the 100 fly, followed by, it looks like Shawnee, and then Walpock. And Shawnee well, is trying to stay within half, striking distance half. here. Nice open she's turn right the there for St. Mary's. That was McLean doing a nice job, but right on his heels, uh, Thomas Coe of Shawnee. He has really closed that gap. St. Mary's and Shawnee okay. are 1-2 coming into the final leg. St. Mary's has about a one and a half second lead going into that. But uh, Gavin Luke, just came out so strong right there. We'll see what they can do in this foot turn, but it looks like he's in a prime spot in this one. 
Daniel Coe gave it a nice effort, but when it's all said and done, Gavin Luke is going to be too much as St. Mary's is going to go back to back on the boys and girls side. They're going to take home the titles in the 200 medley relay. They are off to a good start. Neither one of those teams have uh, won a Western Buckeye League team championship yet, so they are off to a good start in search of their first one. Heat 5 of 5 is getting ready to step up on the blocks. They are going to be lined up as follows. Haley Childs of Van Wert is in lane one. Lane two is Sophie James from St. Mary's. Lane three is Carly Mag of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane four is Sierra Rupert of St. Mary's. Lane five is Blanca Lopez of St. Mary's. And in lane six is Delaney Buxton of Kenton. Top seed time coming into this race belongs to Carly Mag in lane three at a 2.05, followed by Sierra Rupert of St. Mary's with a 2.07. So we'll keep an eye on those two throughout this race. You know, and Nick, the 200 is an interesting race because, you know, oh, you know, for as long as swim has been going on, the 200 has looked at that as almost almost as a distance race. It's kind of that mid-distance, just under that 500. But over the last decade or so, pretty much anything outside of that 500 is get, gets treated like a sprint, and this 200 is starting to get there as well, where you just see these girls come out, and they are in sprint form the entire time. Yeah, as you get to the more elite swimmers and they get better condition, the 200 is a sprint. Uh, I'd say even when I was in high school 10 odd years ago, you were going like 80%, 90% in the first 100 and then putting it whatever you got at the end. But these two girls so far are kind of going all out as they can. Uh, so far we have Carly Mag just a little bit ahead of Sierra Rupert. The top two times have stayed neck and neck into the wall after the first 100 is being led by Carly Mag. But you see Sierra Rupert is right there with her trying to stay within about one stroke here so far as they get into the final turn. Both of them have opened up a quite a big lead on the rest of the field. So we'll see a little bit deep it looked like on that turn. Coming out of the water was Sierra Rupert. Carly Mag still has the lead. Sierra Rupert trying to stay with her. Going to try to track her down here at the end. We got one more cookie. Or, and you one are right, Nick. Cookie. I lost track. See, yep. that's what happens when you talk about the distance races. Yep. <laughs> it's easy to lose track. Carly Mag had a great flip turn there. Kind of opened up her lead to about another half body more. But Sierra Rupert is swimming strong right here. It's going to come down to this last turn to see who wins. Coming off the wall. It looks like Sierra Rupert took the lead, had a nice turn, and she has reached out to a short lead. We've seen all this last 100. She has done a nice job of staying right with Mag, and now Rupert looks like she's going to out-touch Mag, and she does by just three-tenths of a second. Sierra Rupert is going to be your Western Buckeye League champion, and she is going to take home the victory in a time of 204-13, followed by... Carly Mag at 204.47. Both of those girls swimming PRs for this season. But it was Sierra Rupert in the end who took home the victory. The boys 200 yard freestyle will be in the water next here on WOSN. It's the boys turn in the 200 yard freestyle. As Heat 4 of 4 is getting onto the blocks, they're going to line up as follows. In lane one will be Isaiah Wackoff from Walpock. In lane two is Kayla Kleinsmith. Lane three is Sam Howe. In lane four, Daniel Coe. Lane five is Tyson Rosengarten. And in lane six, Aiden Minnick. Top seed time coming in today belongs to Sam Howe of Van Wert, 154.04. As we have to get a little quiet, we're pretty close to the start line over here. We had a great setup and a great view. And, uh, and it's kind of one of the unique things about this defiance pool. Everybody's kind of right on top. So you can hear a lot of the fans. You can hear a lot of the uh, coaches in the background. It gets pretty loud in here. Out to a nice start in lane three is how He's going to have a lead after the first 50. He just looks so strong in the pool. He, he does long arm strokes. He, he's got his pace down right. His kicking's down right. His breathing's down right. Everything he's doing right now is very good. He came out two very good flip turns. And he's going to lead. Yep, yeah, hits a third really good turn. He's just so strong in his breakout strokes, too. He's just, he, he seems like he does this race a lot and knows what he's doing. A weird part about the uh, 200 free is they, the kids swimming today really aren't swimming a ton in their regular meets. This is just kind of a, a, a event you swim at bigger meets to kind of either qualify for districts or get some points. And how continues to lead here. And we are 
coming through. 125 as we are getting closer to the last stretch here as Sam Haug just continues to open up this lead. Coming in, at least on paper, it looked like Daniel Crow was going to be able to keep this one close. He was about two and a half seconds back. And he is there in second place for sure, but Sam Howe is just swimming a fantastic race. It was an important thing to remember for swimmers is you're gaining a spot right now. You thought you'd come in and be a closer race, but you really just got to swim your race. Nothing you can do can control the people in lanes next to you. Know your pace. Know what you can do to push yourself, and that's all you can do. But Sam Howe came out just an amazing race by him. He's How been, he's been strong it, since lap one to, to lap eight. Has a chance. Looked like there for a second. He may have a chance to go under 150. Going to touch the wall in 151.08. A new season best for him. And in second is going to be Daniel Coe from Shawnee. And in third will be Caleb Kleinschmidt of St. Mary's. All four strokes will be on display next as the girls 200-yard IM will hit the water. Tonight's title sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. The girls 200-yard IM Heat 4 of 4 is getting ready to get started. The lineup is as follows. Lane 1, Ava Botkins of St. Mary's. In lane 2 is Piper Triplett of St. Mary's. Lane 3, Morgan Schimler of Shawnee. In lane 4 is Elizabeth Seidner of Wapak. In lane 5 is Morgan Mag of Ottawa Glandorf. And in lane 6, Vivian Elrod of Elida. Should be a fantastic race right in the middle of the pool between Morgan Schimler and Eli Elizabeth Seidner. Morgan Schimler comes in with the top time of 2 minutes and 16 seconds. That is sixth fastest in Division Two, And then right next to her is Elizabeth Seidner with a time of 2 minutes, 16.72 seconds. And that is the ninth fastest in Division One currently. Morgan came in with the lead there, but uh, Elizabeth took it back with a nice turn, but Morgan was able to get it back the long length of the pool. Uh, the, hundred, the first 100 in the IM is the easy, it's very easy. If you're an IMer, butterfly and backstroke are spins really good at. Where it's going to start falling apart or getting really good for these swimmers is when they hit the breaststroke. We've seen a lot of time drops here in the early going, especially in some of these earlier heats um, that we haven't uh, televised yet. A lot of good races going on, and we expect to continue to see that here in this heat as Schimmler is out to a nice lead right now over Seidner. Yeah, we got a packed, uh, packed pool deck here today. A lot of fans showing up here right next to the OG crowd, and they're cheering on every heat like it is the heat to win the, the whole thing. And now into the breaststroke. We'll see if Seidner can cut into this lead from Schimmler. Schimmler looking strong, but Seidner does look like she's getting a little bit of ground here. Getting a little bit. This, this turn of this pullout's going to decide how that last 50 is going to go. Looked like Schindler might have been a little bit long on that one as she came into the wall. Seidner had a better open turn. She is closing the gap, getting closer. She's going to she's gonna come in about a half a body length behind, but it's going to come all down to who's got enough energy left to finish off that 53. A great 50 in the breaststroke. Gives Seidner a chance. Schindler and Seidner now going to fight this one out. Seidner's kicking hard, but it looks like Schindler is pulling just very strong swimmer. Let's make pull a little victory here. All come down this turn. Both had really good turns there. Schimmler able to open up that lead as Seidner had gotten close, but Morgan Schimmler looks like she's going to hold her off. Morgan Schimmler is going to get into the wall and she's going to touch in a time of 2 minutes, 17.15 seconds. Second place is going to be taken by Elizabeth Seidner in a time of 2.19.09. And looks like Morgan Mad came in third there with a 20 or 225. So a great race from start to finish by all lanes, but it's going to be Morgan Schimmler who comes away with the victory. The boys 200 IM is on deck as they will be taking the pool, and we will be on a record watch as Reese Triplett has a fast incoming seat time. So we will see what he can do when he hits the water next. The boys 200 yard IM is on deck. Heat two of two is getting ready to take the blocks. In lane one will be Aiden Latham of Shawnee. Lane two, Colin Stephan of Ottawa Glendor. Lane three, Reese Triplett of St. Mary's. Lane four, Brady Triplett of St. Mary's. In lane five, Mason Latham of Shawnee. And in lane six, Julian Jordan of Walpock. 
This should be an extremely entertaining and fast race to watch. We have four of the top 15 times in Division II in this race. The top time belongs to Reese Triplett in 201.42. That is good, uh, good enough for six fastest. The ninth fastest time belongs in the lane right next to him, Brady Triplett, in a time of 207. Tenth fastest time, Colin Steffen of Ottawa Glandorf in a 208. And the 13th fastest time belongs to Nathan Latham of Shawnee in a time of 209.97. Now, this race might not be for, it, it seems pretty obvious that Reese is probably going to win this race. But what really matters in events like this are getting those second, thirds, and fourth places because they do add up three point total overall. But this, uh, Reese is a very good swimmer. If he can go sub two minutes in the corner I am, that is a level of elite that very, very few kids ever reach. If he does do that, that 200 IM record will be in danger. That belongs currently to Keaton McMurray of Salina back in 2018. He swam 159.17. We'll see if Reese can challenge that time as he is currently out to a lead. And you know, one of the things that we're going to be watching, when you mentioned it after the 200-yard uh, medley, the St. Mary's boys and girls got off to victories in both of those. They, neither one of those teams have ever won a WBL championship in swimming. They, the WBL has been dominated by Shawnee over the years as they are out to the lead, and St. Mary's has, has yet to pick up that first victory. And we've seen them, at least here in the early going, swimming very well. A 1-2 finish here could go a long way for the boys as Brady and Reese Triplett currently hold those spots. And St. Mary's is positioned very well to win this for the boys, but man, you watch Reese Triplett, you gotta be envious of him. He just looks so, it's just like he's going so easy in that water, but he's just so strong, he's moving so cleanly through that water. His strokes are so efficient, he's not losing any energy. It's just a very clean swim. Well, we continue as Reese Triplett is one, Brady Triplett two, Colin Steffen three, Mason Latham four. And it looks like Reese is trying to put out, uh, pull out and open this lead up. 155, I don't think he's going to get the sub two. We'll see if he can get close to his season best. And he is going to take home the victory. He's going to be able to cruise to still a very respectable 203-5-3. Very good swim by uh, Brady Triplett there, taking two seconds off his seed time. As everybody behind Reese actually reduced time, very good swim on all sides by everybody. But when it was all said and done, Reese Triplett takes home the victory. Brady Triplett goes two, and St. Mary's has some big points in the team total. So now that the strokes have been done, they've been focused on, it is time for the sprinters to take center stage as the girls' 50-yard freestyle will be on the blocks next. The girls' 50-yard freestyle is underway. Heat five of six is about to step up onto the blocks. In lane one will be Ma Madison Milner of St. Mary's. Lane two, Eliana McCrate of Ottawa Glendorf. Haley Becker's in lane three from Defiance. Ansley Newman, lane four from Shawnee. Lane five is Liv Ashball of Van Wert. And in lane six is Sydney Kasakovich from uh, Bath. Bath, excuse me. The LBL always throws me off <laughs> on Bath. Top time in this heat that belongs to Ansley Newman in lane four from Shawnee. No, excuse me, it's Haley Becker of Defiance. In lane three with 27.76, Ainsley Newman has a 27.94. And as we get these shorter races, the difference between being seated 12th and being seated 5th is four tenths of a second. So these, these races do matter for points. Somebody in this heat is going to score for their team. See, as we come up to the wall, who is able to touch first? And it is going to belong to Ainsley Newman as she swims a 27.61. As that is now her season best time. We'll see if that's enough to maybe squeeze some points out of. Uh, heat six of six is coming in. That'll be right on the borderline of whether or not she'll get some points for her team. And when you're swimming in that final heat, you are looking at those times from the heat before because you do have to beat them. And there will be kids who creep up and, and beat you from that heat before. So it, it, it is pushing these girls that are about to get on the block right now. See, Ileana McCrate also swam a great race in lane two from Ottawa Glendorf. She lowered her time. So heat six of six is getting ready to step on the blocks, and lane one will be Alana Kloss of Otto Glandorf, Katie Bauer of Walpock in lane two, Claire Turner of St. Mary's in lane three, Cece Schoft of Shawnee in lane four, Arlie Amspoker of Elida in lane five, and in lane six will be Kelsey Schmitz of Ottawa Glandorf. We saw Claire Turner have a very strong 53 in the medley relay area. She's going to go one half. 
Claire Turner and CeCe Schaaf only separated by four tenths of a second for the top qualifying time. So we'll see coming out of the turn, it looks like it is Schaaf who's out into a little bit of a lead here. Early Inspoke is there in lane five pushing as well. Inspoke are coming back for injury as she's going to challenge. But then it is going to be lane four. CC Schaaf of Shawnee. She touches in the time of 25-7-9 as she takes some time off of her season best like, as well. Like Katie Bauer in lane two there snuck up for a nice little second place. So the boys, 50 freestyle. The sprinters, they'll be coming into the water next. Boys, 50 freestyle is in the water right now. Heat four of five. He's getting ready to step onto the blocks. In lane one will be Robbie Gamble of Van Wert. Lane two, Drew Lodick of Van Wert. In lane three, Hunter Drury of Shawnee. Lane four will be Tommy Mustaine of Ken. Lane four, Wyatt Mallet of Shawnee. And in lane six, Sean Alexander of Shawnee. Top time in this heat belongs to Hunter Drury in lane three. Time of 23 and 9 8. As he was right on the brink of that final heat. And Drew will be looking to see if he can't put a time up that may get him into those top six spots. And Tommy Mustang came out real quick with a great start and great pull out strokes. Coming into the last little bit here as it looks like Drury is out front, but it might be tight. We'll see who touches, and it is Drury with a time of 24 1 1. He will win that heat, followed by, I believe that was his teammate in lane one. No, excuse me, that's Robbie Gamble of Van Wert. He came in second with 24-2-8. Everyone is on their feet right now, waiting for the first to start right next to us. In heat five of five. In lane one, Landon Stoller of Bath. Lane two, Gannon Casebolt of Walpock. Lane three, Jackson Newcomb of Shawnee. He is a sub-22-50 freestyle swimmer. In lane four, Owen Becker of Walpock. Lane five, Grady Steffen of Ottawa Glandorf. And in lane six, Alex Schrader of Ottawa Glandorf. As all eyes will be on Jackson Newcomb to see what he can do. And Jackson Newcomb is just an elite swimmer. His, his, his pull is so strong, his start and turns are just so fast. He so, came up a little bit short there, though. And actually, it wasn't, wasn't the greatest start either. He's had to kind of come from behind. And it looks like he's going to take this victory, but I don't think it's going to be as big as everybody thought it might be as he swam a 22-2-4 in that heat. And Newcomb just seemed off right from the start, but it still was enough to come away with the conference win. So Jackson Newcomb comes away with the victory as expected, but a lot of good times after him. The girls, they'll be back in the water. The 100-yard butterfly is next. Tonight's presenting sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpole, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. The girls' 100-yard butterfly is underway. Heat three of three is getting ready to step on the blocks. In lane one will be Layla Ermshire. In lane two, Peyton Gable. Lane three is Katie Bauer. Lane four, Taylor Knott. In lane five, Morgan Mag. And in lane six is Abigail Nelson. Two swimmers from St. Mary's, three from out of a Glendorf with Katie Bauer of Walpock, the top seat time at 101.25. This could be a, a very interesting race, especially when we look at the team scores as after 10 events, Ottawa Glendorf sits in first place with 117 points. St. Mary's is in second with 111. And those two teams have five swimmers here in this race. Yeah, OG's not winning a lot of races, but they are always like third, fourth, and fifth in these races, and those points do add up. Coming out of the first 50 as they get into the wall, it looks like Katie Bowers out in front by a couple of strokes. She looks to pad that lead here on the second 50. Yeah, Katie, Katie's stroke looks great. She's staying on top of the water, which means she's not really sinking down, having to pull herself all the way back up. As we get deeper into this race, you're going to see some swimmers start sinking in. It is a very tiring race. You are completely gutted after this one. See there in lane number four is Taylor Knott. She is right on Katie Bowers' heels. Katie Bowers is going to be able to hold her off, and she will come away with the victory in a time of 101-3-1. And then right behind Taylor Knott from Ottawa Glendorf in a time of 102-7-1. Really good race there by Taylor Knott. As you get in these shorter distance races, it gets harder and harder to take time off. They're taking off about a second and a half is a really good time, especially this time of season. 
The girls finished in the Hunter Butterfly. The boys are getting ready to take the blocks, and they will be up next. The boys' 100-yard Butterfly is up. Heat two of two. In lane one will be Aiden Minnick of Shawnee. In lane two is Landon Stoller from Bath. Lane three, Marcus McLean of St. Mary's. Lane four is Thomas Coe of Shawnee. In lane five will be Parker McGraw of Ottawa Glandorf. And in lane six, Brian Speckman of St. Mary's. Top time coming into this race belongs to Marcus McLean in lane three from St. Mary's. He has a time of 55.77. Right behind him is Thomas Coe of Shawnee. He'll be in lane four with a time of 56.28. We got our score update a little bit ago. Shawnee's in first place, two points over St. Mary's right now. Shawnee, I don't believe, has won a race yet, but this need is more of a, a determination of the depth of your program. Can you get guys finishing fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth to pick up those small points and put you ahead? St. Mary's has been at the top of a lot of these races, but they're still behind right now. And it is St. Mary's yet again out in front as McLean leads this race. But on either side of him, or no, excuse me, just on down lane four, Coe staying right with him from Shawnee. And lane one is another Shawnee uh, swimmer looking to try to stay close. As we're going to have to start keeping a little bit closer track, it looks like, of those swimmers towards the bottom of these um, final heats as the scoring and the way that it's playing out. Those places are becoming more and more important. Looks like Tom's uh, coach going to push Marcus here. Big him all he can get. Gonna see Poe is trying to push to see if he can out touch him. And they come in, touch to the wall. The a They actually got, they tied for second. They as lane two in a little bit of a shocker. Landon Staller from Bath touched in a 56 1 5. And then in lane three and four, Thomas Coe and Marcus McLean tie with a 56-2-1. You do not see that very often. A great race out of those three. And congratulations to Landon Staller down in lane two as he is your 2023 conference champ in the 100-yard butterfly. He, he saw the opportunity there. He took a second and a half off of his time and came out ahead. That's crazy. And all it took was just being on the right stroke count to finish out that race. The other guys finished with half strokes. He finished with a whole stroke and got it there. The girls freestyle will be back in the water as it's going to be the 100 yard distance next. In lane one, it will be Amelia Hastings of Shawnee. Lane two, Willow Horman of Ottawa Glandorf. In lane three, Liv Ashball of Van Wert. In lane four will be Haley Childs from Van Wert. Lane five, Madison Milner of St. Mary's. And in lane six, Kira Bang of Salina. And as we saw with our score update earlier, these are the heats that are going to determine who wins for the WBL. Uh, you got to get your fifth, sixth, seventh finish places in, and these people need to be pushing the people in the final heat to make them have to, to work for it. Looking at a, a couple of results here in earlier races, the girls 200 yard medley relay, ninth place was Defiance, eighth place Van Ort, seventh place Salina, and sixth place was Kenton, and fifth place Elina, fourth was Ottawa Glandorf. Third was Shawnee, and second was Walpock, and in first place for the time of 152 and 9-0 was St. Mary's, the team of Sierra Rupert, Piper Tripper, Peyton Gable, and Claire Turner. Certainly Haley Child is ahead here, coming in her last turn. 100 is just a dead sprint. It is tiring. You do not want to sprint that last 25 after you get that last foot turn, but you just got to give everything you got. Swimming is one of those sports that's nice, is you're going to be here for six hours today, and you're going to be in the pool for collectively Three minutes. Haley Childs with a tremendous swim as she touches the wall in a time of one minute, 78 seconds. And we'll have to keep an eye on that one as that one might be good enough to get her into that top six. She swam a great race, took off several seconds from her PR. It looks like, I, I believe, uh, Delaney, oh, not Delaney Bucks, Madison Milner, I think, all started that race. Uh, I think I saw on our camera, she twitched just a little bit and they got her for it. That's really the only way, false starts are really the only way you get DQ'd at this level. Beat six of six is up in lane one, Kenzie Snyder of Walpock. Lane two, Cece Shoft of Shawnee. Lane three, Claire Turner of St. Mary's. Lane four, Haley Becker of Defiance. Lane five, Delaney Buxton of Kenton. And in lane six, Aram Eob of Shawnee. We already saw Cece Shoft and Claire Turner have a great race earlier in the 50s. Let's we'll see if they can replicate that here in the 100. Coming out of the turn, it is going to be Claire Turner. 
She had the top time coming into this race, a time of 56.75 seconds. See these split times here. 26 puts her on a good pace if she can get uh, under 30 for a second split. Looks like in second right now was lane two. That's Cece Shaw. So those two continuing to try to push each other, but right now it is all Claire Turner as she comes into the final 25. Yeah, she kick's still going strong. The form is still tight. Uh, she came in three seconds ahead on the seat time. She's going to finish about three seconds ahead. Blair Turner is going to touch the wall in a time of 56.10. And that will give her the conference championship in the 100-yard freestyle. CC Shaw came in there with a nice finish. Took a couple seconds off her, her seat time, too. So the girls are going to step out of the water. The boys will be up next as they will give it the 100-yard freestyle their shot. The boys' 100-yard freestyle is up. Heat three of four. Stepping up to the blocks in lane one will be Andrew Monroe of St. Mary's. Lane two, Robbie Gamble of Van Wert. Lane three is Aaron Dosick of Salina. Lane four, Hunter Drury of Shawnee. Lane five, uh, Jack Zhang of Salina. And in lane six, Carter Schnitke of Ottawa Glandor. Looks like a clean start by all of the swimmers. Top seat time in this heat belongs to Aaron Dosick of Salina with a 55-7-1. But right on his heels be Hunter Drury of Shawnee with a 55-9-2. All three caught up there, had very good turns. But uh, we can see there's a lane four. That is Hunter Drury just having, oh, well, he kind of fell off a little bit there. But he was having a good swim there for the, the, the middle 10 yards. Right now, it's Drury and Gamble, or excuse me, Dosick and Gamble fighting for that top spot. Drury, though, has gotten himself back into the mix. So it looked like he had fallen off. This is what's going to come down to it. Drury looks like he may be just a little bit ahead of Dosick. Going to come down. We'll see who can touch the wall first. Lane two has jumped out as Gamble looks like he's going to take it. And he does in a time of 54 one That's a great swim for all three of them. They all took time off. Robbie Gamble took over three seconds off right there. That was a great swim. Gamble winning convincingly. Hunter Drury second. And then Dosick touching the wall in third. Heats four of four. He's getting ready to step onto the blocks. In lane one, Carter Cleaves of Shawnee. Lane two, Colin Stephan of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane three, Sam Haug of Van Wert. Lane four is Gannon Casebolt of Walpock. Lane five, Alex Schrader of Ottawa Glendorf. And in lane six, Wyatt Mallet of Shawnee. Sam Howe comes in with the top time of 49-4-3. He has a, about a full second seat time faster than a second place, which belongs to Gannon Casebolt of Walpock. And if you're not super familiar with swim time, if you can go sub 50 seconds in a hundred freestyle, you're an elite swimmer. I'm sure Sam doesn't feel like an elite swimmer because he probably has buddies who swim 47 seconds, and I'm sure they have buddies who swim 45 seconds. But swimming is one of those sports where it never, there's never an end to it. There's always one more like gear you think you can hit, and we're going to see that today as they push each other in this, uh, this heat. Yeah, and you can tell right now is it looked like Casebolt was out to a lead, but Colin Stephan has stayed right with him, coming down to the last 12 and a half. We'll see what's going to happen here. How looking to try to out-touch Case Bolt, and it's going to be a 1-2-3 finish. Each one of those guys not separated by more than tenth of a second, and the win is going to come in lane three, Sam Howe, because he touches the wall in 50.32, and second place, lane four, Gannon Case Bolt, and in third was Colin Steffen of Ottawa. And, and it all came down to how had a full stroke left in the tank there, and Case Bolt had to do a little half stroke to finish. And at, at, at six, six hundredths of a second, that's all it took. So the sprinters will step aside. We're going to see the distant race now. The girls 500 freestyle is next. And tonight's title sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. The girls 500 yard freestyle underway. Heat three of three. He's on the blocks. They will line up as follows. In lane one will be Alana Class of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane two, Blanca Lopez of St. Mary's. Lane three, Sierra Rupert of St. Mary's. Lane four will be Hilda Kupla of Walpock. In lane five, Vivian Elrond of Elida. And in lane six, Samantha Beckett of Ottawa Glandor. The 500 is a very strange event because it's the only event you ever like really feel conscious for in the water. The other events you're sprinting, 
you just, it's kind of it kind of feels like guttural and feral. You're just swimming, using all your energy to do that. The 500, about 200, and it really sets in that you're going to be in the water for another three to four minutes. So it's a really interesting race. You kind of set your pace early and hope you can maintain it for as long as you can, and then just kind of pull yourself into the finish for those last uh, few laps. Top seed time coming into this race belongs to Sierra Rupert of St. Mary's. She has a time of 540.02 seconds. In second is Hilda Kukla of Walpock. She's right there with 544.96. So we'll see the strategy that the girls want to race. We'll take a look at some results. We have a little bit of time here. The girls 200-yard free. In 10th was Kaya Sutton. In 9th, Sarah Schrader. In 8th place, Erica Bell. 7th was Kenzie Schneider. In 6th was Blanca Lopez. 5th, Haley Childs. 4th place, Delana Buxton. In 3rd, Sophie James. In 2nd, Carly Mag. And in 1st place, from St. Mary's, was Sierra Rupert. The girls 200 yard IM final in 10th was Jordan Bush, 9th Vivian Elrod, 8th Samantha Beckett, 7 was Layla Ermsher, in 6th was Abigail Nelson, 5th Ava Botkins, 4th Piper Triplett, in 3rd was Morgan Mag, 2nd Elizabeth Schneider, and in 1st place from Shawnee in a time of 217.15 was Morgan Schimler. The girls 53 finals in 10th place, Liv Ashball in 9th Haley Beckett, Eighth place was Eliana McCrate. Seventh, Ansley Newman. Sixth, Kelsey Schmidt. In fifth, Alana Class. Fourth place, Arlie Armspoker. In third place, Claire Turner. In second was Katie Bauer. And in first place, from Shawnee, was Cece Shaw. It looks like Sierra and Hilda have just kind of locked in on each other, and they're just gonna just gonna stick with each other for the next couple hundred here. And as they get later into the race, whoever's got a little more left in the tank is going to come out ahead here. A an interesting little tidbit here at uh, the Defiance Y is that the, the clock is in the far corner of, uh, of the room. Uh, I swam at Elida, so I swam a lot at the Lima Y. Lima Y is great because you can always turn to your side and see what your pace is. Here, these girls are just kind of going at it and kind of trusting their instincts for how to pace themselves for this race. Sierra and Hilda continue to lead. We're going to step aside. We'll be back with the finish here on WOSN. Hilda Kupla and Sierra Rupert continue to lead in this girls 500 yard freestyle as Hilda is trying to open it up now as we approach the final 50 meters of this race. Yeah, as you get this deep in this race, it really matters to keep your feet going. Kicking when you're swimming keeps your body up in the water and it's so much easier to pull yourself through. Uh, we'll see who has more left in the tank here. Hilda's ahead, but it looks like Sierra's kind of pulling back a little bit. You can hear it's getting loud here inside the Defiance Area YMCA as Hilda Kupla is looking to take home this victory. She is really opening up quite a big lead over Sierra Rupert after Rupert had been able to stay close. And Hilda coming down into it is going to take this one rather, uh, uh, rather convincingly. And she touches in a time of 537.76. As uh, she smashes her season PR. And it's just a hard race to gauge. You really don't swim a lot during the year, so you finally get a chance like this to really capitalize on it. She had a lot left in the tank there for that last 25, so I'm assuming she swims against her at an even better time. In lane three, that was Sierra Rupert. It took a second for her time to register, but as I don't think she quite got the wall. She is going to take home second. Third place down there is in lane five. That belongs to Vivian Elrod of Elida. And she also took off some pretty good time from her season PR. But it was Hilda Kupla who came out and pretty much led right from the start of things. And she is your 2024 conference champion. The girls, they're going to exit the pool. And then it's going to be the guys' distance swimmers. They will have their turn at the 500-yard freestyle. Boys, 500-yard freestyle is underway. Heat three of three is getting ready to step onto the blocks. The lane assignments are in lane one is Aiden Latham of Shawnee. Lane two, Sawyer Buxton of Kenton. Lane three, Gavin Lukey of St. Mary's. In lane four is Daniel Coe of Shawnee. Lane five, Tyson Rosengarten of Ottawa Glandorf. And in lane six is Thomas Coe of Shawnee. Top seat time coming into this race belongs to Gavin Lukey of St. Mary's. He comes in with a time of 529.93, followed by Daniel Coe and Sawyer Buxton. They will try to see if they can't track him down over the length of this race. 
the, the typical strategy here is you come out pretty strong in your, your first 100. You're not coming out 100% or even 90%. You come out 80%. And these guys, you want to end around with about a one-minute time in that first 100, and then kind of you're going to you're going to fall off a little bit as you get later in the race, and then take whatever you have at the end of the race and just dump it all, and hope you're not swimming uh, the 200 free relay because that's you know six minutes afterwards. <laughs> and as of right now, a great race started out by Tyson Rosengarten of Ottawa Glandorf. He was right up there, and he was pushing Gavin Lukey. So we'll see if he's able to hang on to the pace. Take a look at some results through the first half of the mean on the boys' side of things. The boys' 200-yard medley relay. In seventh was Kenton, sixth Van Wert, fifth Ottawa Glandor, fourth Salina. Third is a Walpock, second Lima uh, Shawnee. And in first place, St. Mary's with a time of 141-26. Team of Reese Triplett, Brady Triplett, Marcus McLean, and Gavin Lukey. For the boys, 200-yard freestyle. In 10th was Sawyer Bux Buxton. In ninth, uh, Jace Utrip. Eighth, Dylan Doolin. In seventh was Connor Vondrell. In sixth was Isaiah Wackoff. In fifth place, Tyson Rosengarten. In fourth, Aiden Minnick. Third, went to Caleb Kleinschmidt. In second, Dan or Daniel Coe. And in first place, from Van Wert with a time of 151.08, Sam Howe. In the boys, 200 yard IM. In 11th was Carson Lighty. Fifth, or excuse me, 10th was Mason Refter. Ninth, Sam Warnicky. Eighth place went to Mason Vogt. Seventh, Gavin Mormon. Sixth place, Aiden Latham. Fifth, Julian Jordan. Fourth place, Mason Latham. Third was Colin Steffen. Second, Brady Triplett. And in first place in the time of 203.53 from St. Mary's, Reese Triplett. On the sprint side of things, boys, 50 yard freestyle. In 10th place, Tommy Mustaine. In 9th was Drew Laudick. 8th, Alex Schrader. 7th, Robbie Gamble. 6th place went to Hunter Drury. 5th, Landon Stoller. 4th, Brady Steffen. 3rd place, Gannon Casebolt. In 2nd, Owen Becker. And in 1st place from Salina, Jackson Newcomb with a time of 22.22. As we mentioned before on the women's side of things for scores, Ottawa Glandorf was in 2nd, St. Mary's in 1st place. On the men's side of things, Ottawa Glandorf was sitting second as well with Shawnee in first place. Looks like our two main guys are kind of locked into their pace. They're hitting around 32 seconds for their split, which is a pretty solid pace. They uh, currently on pace to finish a little bit under their seed time, but they're, they're kind of in the, the nitty gritty of it now. This is when the race starts to get hard. You st uh, honestly, you start to get a little bit bored in the water. Uh, you, it really sinks in that you're kind of locked in for a little while longer here. A few more minutes left in the water for these guys. We'll step aside and be back for the final part of this race on WOSA. 500-yard freestyle is coming close to an end as Gavin Lukey has really opened up quite a big lead over, over second place, Tyson Rosengarten. Uh, he, he's just keeping his feet moving. Uh, and the thing, too, is Gavin's only 14 years old. He's thrown against 16, 17, 18 years old. But uh, he's just about to unload the tank here. Uh, it's a very interesting thing seeing swimmers in all sort of levels of development. You see these older guys like Jackson Newton who are completely built already. And you see guys like Gavin who are kind of just starting to hit the puberty, really. And the final 12 and a half coming up for Gavin Lukey as he is going to cruise into this victory with an impressive time of 5 17 3 6. He took off a ton of time on that PR. What a great race by Gavin. And that, that happens in the events like the 200 500. You don't swim in these a ton. I mean, that's what, 18 or 12 seconds off his, his fast time? That, that's a lot. And if you take a look up there on lane one, Aiden Latham came from behind to take second place away from Tyson Rosengarten. But both of those guys took off a lot of time from their seat times. These 500 swimmers were very, very impressive. We are going back to the relays now. Some individual events behind us, but now we get to see the sprinters in action. And the 200-yard freestyle relay is up next. Tonight's presenting sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Dumfries, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Girls 200-yard freestyle relay is up on the deck. Heat, heat two of two. And lane one will be Kenton. Lane two is Walpock. Lane three is Shawnee. Lane four, Ottawa Glendorf. Lane five, St. Mary's. And in lane six is Salina. The top seed time coming in belongs to Shawnee. 
Time of 145.65. Before we get to this one, though, we do want to take a second and recognize a very long-standing record at Walpock uh, came to an end in the girls' 500-yard freestyle as Hilda Kukla with a time of 537.76 takes over that new record. So congratulations to her. A very long-standing record over at Walpock, and they have a history of very, very good swimmers, so a big accomplishment for her. So this is the part of the meet where the, the strategy starts coming in. Some of these girls, this is going to be the last event they swim for the rest of the day. And some of these girls might be more relay-style uh, swimmers. And in high school swim, you can do two individual uh, races or two relays, or you can do one individual race and three relays. And this is where a lot of teams try to pick up points. And you see Shawnee there in lane three, continue to have the lead first in the water here on this third leg. A great start, lots of distance underneath that time for the third leg of Shawnee, Aramia. Uh, we don't, unfortunately, don't have the OG relay races, but she's got a great, great turn that's taking the lead for her team going into this last lap, or last 50. Yeah, coming out of that turn, she had a great underwater as Eop was a little bit slow coming up, and that gave Onwick Landorf an opportunity to take the lead. They're in the water first, and here, come, here it comes down to the final leg. Shawnee is pulled back in front. We've already seen what Morgan Schindler can do in the water, but that's coming out of that on. turn, a, Rough turn that time. Ottawa Glamour takes over the lead. Is Schindler going to be able to track her down? It doesn't look like she's going to be able to. And Ottawa Glamour touches the wall in the time of 145.05 to take home the victory. I mean, she just held her off. Morgan Schindler was a great swimmer. She knew she was coming, and she just gave it everything she had right there. Congratulations to Ottawa Glamour as they come away with another victory. And they are conference champs in the 200-yard freestyle relay. So as they clear the water, the boys are going to take the step up, and they will be next. The boys 200-yard freestyle relay, heat two of two, lane two. And it's going to be on with Glendorf. Lane three is St. Mary's, lane four, Shawnee, and in lane five, a Wapak. Top time coming into this race belongs to St. Mary's in heat three. And they will have Reese Triplett, Brady Triplett, Caleb Kleinschmidt, and Marcus McLean going. Shawnee will be right behind them, though, just under a second difference between those two teams. It looks like Salina won that first heat, but it looks like they got DQ for false start. We'll see what kind of first leg each one of these teams get. As it looks like Walpock swimming a fantastic first leg. Looks to be out to an early lead. Oh, Owen Becker's a very, very good swimmer. He just had a crazy turn right there that took him from about third place to first place by half of Ion. Walpock in the water first. Let's see if they're able to maintain this lead as there's a fight up front. Julian Jordan trying to hold off all challengers. It's Brady Triplett and Carter Cleaves are trying to make this one close. So far, so good for Walpock. Uh, that, here's where you get into it. Third is typically your weakest swimmer. Some people switch it up, but third is typically your weakest. So we'll see what happens here. This will show the depth of each of these teams. Walpock was first into the water, followed very closely by St. Mary's. Going into the wall, they look to be neck and neck with Shoney right there as well. Walpock swimming fantastic. It's going to come down to the anchors as it looks like Walpock, St. Mary's, and Shoney are all neck and neck. And McLean, Cohen, and Casebolt are all very good swimmers. Let's see how this goes. St. Mary's looks to be pulling out to the lead as McLean has really opened things up coming out of that turn. Walpock is in second as McLean is trying to finish this one. It'll be very close, and it looks like it is going to go to St. Mary's as they just out-touch the team of Walpock. And St. Mary's has a time of 132.95. Walpock with a 133.36. Very strong last 100 by OG there. They were out of the conversation, came all the way back into third place. They're very close to second place as well. So back to the specialties as the girls 100 yard backstroke is up. We'll be back with the final heat of this race in just a second. Girls 100 yard backstroke underway. Heat three of four getting ready to get started. In lane one will be Adrian Fry of Defiance. Lane two, Kinley Howe of Kenton. Lane three will be Willow Horman of Ottawa Glendorf. 
Lane four, Aram Eob of Shawnee. Lane five, Sarah Schrader of Ottawa Glendorf. And in lane six, from Kenton, Jude Sprang. Top time coming into this race belongs to Willow Horman of Ottawa Glendorf. A time of 109.89. We've seen a lot of time drops here tonight. So we'll see if they're able to improve on these. I can't imagine the way that everybody seems to be swimming. We should see, we should see some pretty good times. Yeah, the, the backstroke. Oh, I'll be quiet here as the backstroke. Yeah, the stop you saw the Kenton swimmer there slip a little bit, so we'll let her get reset. And you see the swimmers want to get as high as they can on that start. It, in the recent years, they've started putting more blocks in that are kind of enable it a little bit more, but it's always real awkward, uh, especially if the touch pads are real, really slick. But uh, backstroke's a really interesting uh, event. A lot of kids, this is like the second event you learn, and it is really hard to be good at it. Uh, it's just very different from all the other strokes. The, the, the rotation of your shoulders is hard. It's hard to get right. The angle at which you're pulling down. Uh, it's hard to know how to angle your head and the body and keep your legs kicked so you're not kind of bobbing up and down and like kind of losing some energy that way. And right there too, I think, is an understated part of what a lot of people don't understand is difficult to figure out with the backstroke. It's the timing of that turn. It's making sure you got your stroke count correctly, making sure you're not getting yourself turned over too quickly. Because if you take too many strokes on uh, your stomach, you're going to end up getting disqualified. Yeah, it, it kind of exposes how hard it is to coach swimming. When you have all of these kids of all different body types, all different abilities, and you're just trying to have them do stuff like counting their strokes and doing their turns. You can't just say, hey, go do five strokes and turn over. Sometimes you do that because they don't know any better. But then, you know, you just have to be like, shit, a perfect stroke count right there and finish on that perfect last stroke rather than like a half stroke hitting the wall. And just as we suspected, we had some nice time drops as it was Sarah Schrader of Ottawa Glendorf coming away with the victory in that heat in a time of 110.90, almost a full five seconds faster than her seat time. Heat four of four, getting ready to step onto the blocks. And they're going to be lined up as followed. In lane one will be Peyton Gable of St. Mary's. Lane two, Sophie James of St. Mary's. Morgan Schimler, she has had a great meet so far here today. She'll be in lane three. In lane four, Taylor Knott of Ottawa Glandorf. In lane five is Hilla Kupla coming off of that school record 500-yard swim from Wapak. And in lane six is Arlie Amspoker of Elida. The top time coming into this one belongs to Morgan Schimler of Shawnee, 101.40. But keep your eye on lane six, Arlie uh, Amspoker. She's coming back off of injury, only recently been back in the water swimming competitively. But anybody who is familiar with swimming in this area knows she is a tremendous swimmer. I might be mistaken, but I think she qualified for state in the back last year. I think she qualified for state, but I, I couldn't remember if it was back there. But I think it was the back there. But yeah, watch out for her. Uh, pretty even spread here on this race for, for seed time. You can see Armstrong is out to, uh, she's falling back a little bit coming off of that turn. We are tight for one, two, and three. As you can see, Ottawa Glandorf, as Taylor Knott is up there, Morgan Schimler right there, Arley there as well. And this is the kind of race that's going to come down to who has that perfect last stroke and butterfly kick into the wall. If you're going to take a half stroke and hit the wall, you're not going to win this race. It's going to be Schimler takes home first. Second is going to go to lane four. That is Taylor Knott of Ottawa Glandorf in third. And a 102-1-1 is lane five. And it... Fourth place, lane six, Arlie Amspoker of Elida, 102.42. So saw some pretty good time drops. Arlie specifically dropped two seconds as she's looking to kind of get her form back and get to where she was last year. Great race by all them, but congratulations to Morgan Schimler. Her great day continues as she is conference champ in the 100-yard backstroke. It's the boys' turn in the 100-yard backstroke as he two of three gets ready. In lane one will be Mason Troyer of Elida. Lane two, Tommy Mustaine of Kenton. In lane three, Caleb Kleinschmidt of St. Mary's. Lane four is Drew Lonick of Van Wert. In lane five is Dylan Geiswein of Ottawa Glendorf. And in lane six, Jackson Blue of Kenton. Top seed time coming into this one belongs to Caleb Kleinsman in lane three with a time of 104.39. But if the trends continue, I imagine we're going to see some more time drops. Yeah, and, and heats like this are kind of what's going to determine who, who wins WL this year. Uh, WL is uh, nicely seated where it's at, where uh, this meet really doesn't matter. This heat doesn't matter. The point spread of this the event is so 
the, the points aren't super stacked at the top. So finishing top three is important, but it's really important to be finishing sixth, seventh, and eighth. And it kind of pushes, it motivates these kids. You kind of hit a point as a, as a coach late in this season where it's kind of hard to motivate kids when they know they have this meet and sectionals left and it's over. But this is kind of the perfect environment to have these kids who aren't going to finish in first place kind of still push themselves for better times. Zuchir Roddick out to a big lead here. He came in with a seat time of 105.43. But he looks to be on pace to cut a lot of time off of that one as he continues to open up a gap between second place. Yes, hips, hips are moving well, feet are moving well. Arms. Looks like he's kinda, dying kinda a little, little bit, sloppy. isn't he? Yeah. yeah, that's the, the kind of fear you get at the end of these strokes. You get a little sloppy, and you start using a lot of extra energy to do stuff that you you could do a little cleaner if you were a little, maybe a little better condition or a little, little tighter form. So Waldick holds on to take home the victory. He takes two seconds off of his seed time, but you could see there he hit with about 12 and a half left to go. He yeah. just looked like he was really starting to die. As he swam a good race, but you can see he's wearing it on his face right now. Yeah, and if, if you don't watch a ton of swimming, that if you can see that, that's kind of your sign of when you see someone starting to struggle. The, the stroke gets a little sloppy. The feet kind of slow down. Uh, but he finished strong and had a pretty good time. He, he could possibly finish top six. So heat three is in the water. Lane one will be Isaiah Walkoff uh, from Wampok. And lane two, Mason Latham of Shawnee. Lane three, Reese Triplett from St. Mary's. In lane four is Owen Becker of Wampok. Lane five, Parker McGraw out of the Glendor. And in lane six, Connor Vondrell from Shawnee. Uh, Connor Vondrell, I think, had an unfortunate start there. I think he slipped off the block. But he's kind of fighting back to kind of try to get into place to, to keep up with these guys up in the front. Coming into this one, the race to watch is going to be between Reese Triplett and Owen Becker right there in the middle of the pool. And so far, it has not disappointed as they were right with each other. They both came out in 27 seconds split to the back. They're very good. They're going to kind of, kind of try to come in around 28, 29 right here. And they're going to, looks like they're going to be pushing each other for this one. And then off the last wall, it looks like Wrecker ha or Becker excuse me, has a little bit of a lead. We'll see if Triplett can track him down. Owen Becker trying to hold him off, and he's going to touch the wall first in the time of 55.14. Takes a little time off of his season best, and that'll be good enough to come away with the conference championship. Owen Becker holds off Reese Triplett, and now it's going to be the breaststroke. The girls' 100-yard breaststroke is up next. Today's title sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. The girls' 100-yard breaststroke is underway. Heat five of five is on the blocks. Lane one is Ava Botkin. In lane two, Ansley Newman. In lane three is Elizabeth Seidner. Lane four, Piper Triplett. Excuse me, lane five is Carly Mag. And in lane six, Campbell Gass. Uh, we just watched what was kind of the most important part of the 100 breaststroke, which is having a great start and a great pullout because if you lose momentum in this race, you're kind of stuck in the water. You can, you can brute force, butterfly back, stroke and freestyle, and if you have sloppy form, you can still be pretty good. If you have sloppy form and breaststroke, you're going nowhere real quick. Piper Triplett is out to a tremendous start. She came in with a seat time of 1.11.04, which was second best behind lane three, Elizabeth Seidner from Walpock, a 1.09.81. one as this race is getting tighter and tighter across all lanes, especially out there in lanes one, two, and four. You see Ansley Newman in lane two, closing the gap, but touching the wall in that open turn first was still Piper Triplett. Here's the side, has got a really good pull out there. I don't know if she has enough to, to sweep this one out, but she's gonna be close. It's gonna come down to Triplett and Seidner. Who's gonna get to the wall first? It's going to be a late, or Piper Triplett in a time of 1-10-5-1. A new season best for her, and that is going to be good for the conference title. So congratulations to Piper Triplett. And the girls are going to get out of the water, and it's going to be the boys' 100-yard breaststroke next. The last individual race of the afternoon is up. The boys 100 yard breaststroke, heat four of four. Lane one, Carter Cleaves. Lane two is Grady Stephan. Lane three, Jackson Newcomb. Lane four is Marcus McLean. And lane five, Brady Triplett. And in lane six, Gavin Lukey. We are on a record watch as Jackson Newcomb comes in with a top seat time of 59.79. That is seated faster than the current 
a conference record of one minute point zero one. And the, the best part for Gavin, or Jackson here as he kind of pushes his record is he's going to have three guys right next to him. They're going to be pushing him the entire race. He's not, he's not like six or seven seconds ahead of him. He's one to two seconds ahead of these guys. And so far, they're pushing him. Meek him out to a, a great start. But Marcus McClain right there, staying, trying to stay close. We also see Grady Steffen trying to keep Newcomb within his sights. And th this is the 25 that's going to determine who wins. The, the, the third 25 in the breaststroke is one of the hardest parts of any race in swimming. You've kind of lost all momentum from your start, and you're really just powering through this last turn. A little bit long that time going into the wall was Newcomb, but he's still going to maintain his lead here. Coming out of the water, trying to bring it home. 53 seconds. We'll see if he's able to stay under a minute. 57. 59, and I don't think he's going to get it, and he doesn't. He touches in just uh, over the current record. And 28 hundredths of a second too slow, but that's still a great race. One minute point two nine from Jackson Newcomb. He still is going to have several opportunities to get that in the years coming as he is going to take home the victory, and he is your conference champ in the 100-yard breaststroke. Tonight's presenting sponsor is Lee's Famous Rusty Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, or home style, happens here. The girls' 400-yard freestyle relay heat two of two is up, and this is coming down to it as you take a look at the updated scoring. In first place is Ottawa Glandorf with 248 points, and second is St. Mary's with 242. This race will determine who goes away with the WBL championship. Yeah, it's really simple for OG. You win it and you win the whole meet. But unfortunately for them, they have uh, St. Mary's right in the middle right there. And if St. Mary's wins and OG gets second, they will tie it. I'm not sure if there's a tiebreaker or what, but. And we'll take a look at the lane assignments here in this heat two. In lane one is Kenton, lane two, Ottawa Glendorf, lane three is Salina, lane four, St. Mary's, lane five is Shawnee, and in lane six is Van Wert. You can tell St. Mary's right now out to a little bit of a lead there in lane four. Ottawa Glendorf right on their hip, though. Uh, the 400 free, uh, free relay is really tough. It kind of exposes who doesn't have a deep team and who are the really deep teams. When I swam in high school, our 400 free relay was always the guys who just needed an extra relay to swim. Some schools were able to move their kids around and have really, really good relays. It looks like that's what OG and St. Mary's have right here. They have four solid girls who are able to swim this race. St. Mary's out to a little bit of a lead here, about a body length, as they get ready to send their third leg into the pool. No, excuse me, we still have another 50 left to go here on this leg. And it's going to be really big for these teams. You've got to get good starts, but you cannot fall start. If you, if you fall start, you will not win the WL this year. They're getting zero points in a relay is like, it, it'll kill any chance you have at place in one. St. Mary's still with the lead here. Final 25 yards left to go. St. Mary's look, or excuse me, out of the Glamorth looking to see if they can't close that gap just a little bit. So far, so good if you're St. Mary's Rough Riders. Third leg, strong. third leg for St. Mary's is Ava Bodkin. She is in the water. We don't have Ottawa Glendorf's lineup, so I'm not sure who their third leg is, but she is right there with Ava. Now you've got nothing after this race. All you're doing is you're going to the shower, you're going to change, you're going to get on the bus and take a nap. So you've got to leave it all in the pool right now. Ava continuing to try to hold off Ottawa Glendorf. Coming around, getting ready for the final 50 here of this third leg. St. Mary's still slightly with a little bit of a leap, but now Ottawa Glandorf coming on strong, looking like maybe they're going to pull it out here as they're going into the last 25. Neck and neck, they both foot turn exactly the same. St. Mary's comes out of the water slightly ahead, but Ottawa Glandorf staying right there as this last leg is going to be fantastic. Yeah, you can see the tech suits have come out, so the girls know this is a really serious race. Those are expensive swimsuits that you cannot wear a lot. And here we go, Ottawa Glandorf out on top. They know if they win this one, they will be WBL champs. St. Mary's looking for, at a minimum, a tie for their first conference championship ever. They are coming down to it. St. Mary's, Ottawa Glandorf, neck and neck, heading into the final 50. 
Claire Turner's a sophomore, but man, she's a great swimmer. And she's really got a really big deep here. Ottawa Glandorf had the slight lead. It looks like they still are slightly ahead. And see what happens. 25 yards left it's, to go. It's so close. Ottawa Glandorf, St. Mary's neck and neck. Ottawa Glandorf trying to be the outright winners. St. Mary's looking to take away the tie. We'll see who touches coming into the wall. And it looks like it's going to be Ottawa Glandorf as your 2024 Western Buckeye League Conference champ. And the OG fans who are still all here are going absolutely crazy. They have cheered for their team no matter what heat it's been, and they've cheered for them like every single race, has been, every single heat has been for the championship. Congrats on Ottawa Glandorf touches the wall in a time of 350.14. St. Mary's right behind 350.80. But Ottawa Glandorf girls are going to take away their seventh conference title as they swam fantastic all afternoon. St. Mary's as well, a valiant effort. And they fell just shy of coming away with their first conference championship as well. OG took eight seconds off there. They had to do it, and they pulled it off. That's, that's really all you can hope for as a coach. Is your girls needed to do something for you, and they did it. The girls, they are over with. The boys are coming up. We said it was close on the girls' side. It is just as close on the boys' side with three teams still in the hunt for that conference title. We'll be back with that race in just a moment. The boys' 400-yard freestyle relay is on deck. Heat two of two in lane two is Shawnee. Lane three, Walpock. Lane four, out of a Glendorf. And in lane five is Van Wert. And a little bit of uniqueness here in this race is St. Mary's sitting number two right now in this point standings. Had to swim in that first heat. They swam a 347, 36. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that time and see how that stacks up here in this race. Lima Shawnee right now is in first place with 219 and a half points. St. Mary's two, 214 and a half. And Ottawa Glandorf with 210 points sits in third. Any one of those three teams here could come away with the win. Yeah, and this is where the strategy is going to come into play. If we look at our heat sheet, it does not look like Shawnee's fielding their strongest relay, but it looks like OG is. And OG's in a position if they win and some things shake out for them, they could win the WBA. And right now, when you take a look at it overhead, Van Wert is out to the lead. Shawnee in second. Ottawa Glendorf sits in third. Van Wert hits the water first. And this, this kind of stuff happens as you get to the 400, and you have to kind of cobble a relay together. Sometimes, like Van Wert there had a really fast start, and sometimes it doesn't hold up all the way through. But looking at the, the kids that have and Sam Howell is the, the, uh, the, the finisher like, in the last lap. Uh, he's really quick, so it's possible they feel a better team than what their, their C team shows. Now it's Ottawa Glandorf looking like they're out to a little bit of a lead there. Maybe Shawnee first into the wall when you look at the split. They are neck and neck. Van Wert falling a little bit off the pace. It's now Shawnee and Ottawa Glandorf with St. Mary's already done watching the time. And it's, just, it's simple for Shawnee. You win this, you win the whole meet. So you just got to give it all. Ottawa Glendorf pulling out to a slight lead here. With Shawnee in second place. And Shawnee does a nice job closing there at the end. Ottawa Glendorf still in the water first, but Shawnee right on their heels. Both teams had good starts there. It's just, it's just really going to come down to placing to, to, to kind, of, kind of make the event a little weird because even if OG wins the race, they still might not win WL, but the guys are still going to be happy that they come away a WL champion. Ottawa Glendorf now opening up that lead. Shawnee is falling to second. And as we mentioned, St. Mary's just watching the time, hoping that their time will hold up that 347-36 as Ottawa Glendorf opens a big lead here. And Shawnee falling off the pace. You watch some of these other teams, Van Wert could probably pop back up into place. A lot goes on in these longer races, and you can't. Con you can see these guys are heading now, and just things can change as you get so many faster guys coming in here. And last legs are in the water for both Ottawa Glendorf and Shawnee. Ottawa Glendorf with the big lead here. Shawnee has a lot of uh, a lot of time here that they got to make up as Thomas Coe is trying to get up there, but right now Ottawa Glendorf swimming a fantastic final leg. 
Yeah, and the, uh, the OG boys, we were sat right behind the, the Titans coach. The OG boys knew the assignment coming in this race. They just got to win the race. They got to do their best. They can't control how other people finish, but looks like they're on top of things right now. Shawnee sitting back in second. Ottawa Glandorf, though, they are going to cruise to a victory as they are going to come in and they are going to win this race in a time of 330.30. They took three seconds off of their seed time. Shawnee's going to touch in 338.70. And based off of the reaction, we can safely say that Shawnee just won their 13th boys team title as they are going to be conference champs. Congratulations to the Shawnee Indians. I believe that puts them at 245.5 points, and OG will finish at 242. St. Mary's could only watch as that one clocked down. They needed to finish ahead of Shawnee. They did not do it, and the Shawnee Indians are going to be your 2024 conference champions. Nick, it was a fantastic meet from start to finish. We saw a lot of great time drops. It has been a fantastic day here at the Defiance Area Wide. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's got to be a little tough for OG boys right now to not finish first, but OG is not a historically strong swim program. Shawnee is. To finish first in girls and second in boys, it's got to be something to be proud of. And for, for a lot of these guys, this is not the end of the road. This is, this is the last kind of fun meet before you get real serious about sectionals and districts. So that about wraps it up for us here. We would like to thank our camera and director, Ken Ricker, doing all the hard work. It's been a long day for him. He has done a fantastic job. Also like to thank Jerry Booty from Defiance High School hooking, up with, uh, hooking us up with all of our heat sheets and all the information for today. And Jordan Minnick here at the Defiance YMCA. Thank you for all your help and hospitality. We really appreciate it. One final time, the OG girls, the Shawnee boys are your Western Buckeye League champions. For Nick Fraley, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night, everybody.